humbled to be the youngest woman ever elected to the United States Congress and to add an additional crack to the glass ceiling. That was our next guest delivering her acceptance speech after officially becoming the youngest woman ever elected to the United States Congress. Fresh off her first 100 days in office, New York Congresswoman Lisa Stefanik joins us uh, this morning. Good morning. Hi. Thank you for coming. Absolutely. Thank okay, you so for having you've me. You've been there for 100 days, uh, better or worse than you thought. Uh, challenging. So I think uh, I think the new class of freshmen is actually very talented and diverse. But I am frustrated with the gridlock in Washington. Uh, but that's part of the reason why I ran for office. So I think that I've been very effective for my district in the first hundred days. Is it worse than you thought in terms of the gridlock? I think, of it, what do we know? What do we think out there in the world? And then you show up and you get there and you're, you think what? We have really good people in Congress and people are working hard on behalf of their districts. The challenge that I see is getting the House in tandem with the Senate. So we've passed a number of common sense legislation out of the House and they haven't yet been brought up for a vote in the Senate. The Senate is more active than it has been in previous uh, sessions, but there's still more work to do. Okay, do you like us making a big deal of this youngest woman bit or is that are we, you know, what, where, where are you on the sort of glass ceiling women in Congress youth issue? I think we need more women in Congress. Um, when I first started running, I didn't actually realize that I would be the youngest woman ever elected to Congress. So this was something that I discovered after I won my primary. But what has been really interesting is as the campaign was getting more attention, parents started bringing their young daughters to events. Non-political families who would have never attended a political rally would bring their elementary age daughters. So it's been a very humbling experience. And I've been amazed at the number of women across the country who have reached out to our office. So take it seriously. It's a humbling feeling, but I think it's an empowering feeling for women across the country of both parties. When did you figure it out? <laughs> After my primary, the media actually was how I figured it out. They started covering right the it. Paper, and the, the previous youngest woman ever elected was also from New York State, Elizabeth Holtzman. She was elected in 1970. Uh -huh. wow. uh, you know, there's been in the past three weeks a recent outbreak of an old uh, phenomenon in the Senate which is bipartisanship, going back to the regular order of business. Leader um, Mitch McConnell has actually gotten the committees to do bills, have votes, have amendments on the floor, and they're actually passing things. Mm -hmm. Do we see the fever breaking on Capitol Hill in general because of that? I think it is good for the country to get back to regular order. I think it's good for the institution of the Senate and Congress. Um, one statistic that I think is really important for people across the country to realize is within the first week of Mitch McConnell's leadership in the Senate, they voted on more amendments than under the previous tenure in the previous Congress of Harry Reid. So that is good. It's important to be able to bring forth amendments. It's important to do the people's work. So I think that's a positive move in the right direction, but there's always more work to do. Do you feel like a little bit of a rare breed being a Republican from New York? Um, actually, we have quite a few Republicans in the congressional delegation in New York. I feel more of a rare breed as a young 30-year-old woman. I sort of stick out like a th sore thumb in Washington. But I think that gives me a unique platform and a unique voice to be able to talk about issues in a unique perspective. You're, you're new to this position, but who are you kind of seeing uh, as people that you can work with in Congress and then places or issues that you think you can really get some work done on? So I serve on the House Armed Services Committee, which is traditionally a very bipartisan committee. Um, I represent Fort Drum in my district, the home of the 10th Mountain, the most deployed unit in the U.S. Army. So I've really gotten to know my colleagues across the aisle dealing with military and defense issues. One new member that I had the opportunity to go on a delegation visit to the Middle East with is Seth who challenged a sitting incumbent in a primary. Um, he represents a district in Massachusetts, and he's a Democrat. But we've been able to work together to bring that new generational voice on the House Armed Services Committee. Is it true that the Capitol Police almost bounced you? <laughs> they have a couple times. <laughs> it, it used to happen pretty much every day. Now it happens only once a week. and I. They think you are what? They just don't think I'm a member of Congress. So during orientation in December, I was actually um, not allowed to walk down the Capitol steps because they didn't realize I was a member of Congress. But the Capitol Police person at the bottom said, can I look at your ID badge again? He said, no, these steps are for you. These are for the members of Congress. But it, it, it happens. Congresswoman, thank you for being here this morning. Congratulations. Thank come you on, very come much. Come on back. Come on. We should talk about 2016. Yes. Your views on that, too.